On today's Town Hall Agenda, shout outs, important upcoming dates, reminders, and a master class in composing an email with Mr. Basilico. And happy birthday shout outs for this week to Sanai Alcindor, Rihanna Gray, Amaya Jayun, Jaden John, Lauren Murthel, Leontay Payne, Adia Stewart, Aaron Van, Jameen Vargas, and Miss Thomas and Miss Oliveri. Happy birthday, everyone. A reminder of some important upcoming dates. Election day is Tuesday, November 3rd. That is fully remote instruction for all. There are no students in Group B in the building on that day. The marking period closes for the first trimester on Friday, November 6th. Veterans Day is Wednesday, November 11th. There is no school that day. And parent teacher conferences will be held remotely, meaning over Zoom or Meet, on Thursday, November 18th. More information on those conferences and how to sign up for them to follow. Good morning, BC students. I hope everybody's having a wonderful Friday. I'm sad that I don't see you guys today. Um, so a couple of announcements for today. Make sure you are capturing your attendance. So let me explain how attendance gets done. When you attend the first 20 minutes of your class, your teacher is capturing your attendance during the meets or during the Zooms. So it would be very beneficial if you wrote your name in the chat, if you feel like you got in maybe after the first five minutes of the synchronous time, email your teacher and let them know you were there so that your attendance can be captured. Your attendance is going to be used for high school applications. So it is very important that it is captured. Mr. Campbell has also created uh, a Google form for you to fill out to capture attendance each day. Please make sure it gets in. It is very important, all right? So we could talk about grades a little bit. So your grades are being generated based on your weekly portfolio tasks. You must complete those tasks. So if you're not present during your lessons, you're gonna struggle with getting those tasks completed. So if you have questions, please email your teachers. All of the email addresses are on our website. You are on all of the Google Classrooms with your teachers. Please make sure that you're speaking to them if you have any questions or concerns. The COVID testing consent form. If you are a student who is fully remote, you still need to have your parental units fill that form out. That form lasts for a year. So if for some reason you come back to the school building, you, we need to have that um, form on file. For students who are hybrid, so if you're in the A group or the B group, we need your form. So please ask your parents to fill that out, your grandparents, your adults, your people. Please fill it out super important. We will be having testing probably every single week because our school is in a yellow zone. So keep that in mind. So those forms are very important. Um, the survey for students who are fully remote, if you want to come back to school, is coming out shortly. Um, so you can fill that out if you'd like to make that choice. But please know, guys, your classes may change. So if you're in a fully remote class and you're going back to school, you are going to have now in-person teachers and not remote teachers. So your program is going to change. Same thing for students who go fully remote. There's a possibility that your classes will change because we can only fit so many people in a group. Um, okay, so I look forward to seeing everybody on Monday. Well, the first half of the group. Um, and do not forget to do your weekly portfolio tasks. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Please say hello to your families for me. All families should have received an invitation to join Operu. That is our digital form manager. In Operu, you can find the blue card, the COVID-19 testing form that Ms. D was just talking about, the immediate release form, the weekly COVID-19 form that the DOE just put out yesterday. Uh, parents, please sign up for Operu. You should have received an invitation. If you did not, you can email or call Ms. Uh, Jen Petrata in the main office, and she will get you set up. Uh, it's very important that we are able to contact families in case of an emergency just to check in. Uh, we've been having a lot of trouble this year in particular getting hold of uh, some families because we don't have updated contact information. So please make sure that you're using Operu to keep us abreast of any changes regarding your phone numbers 
um, or any other information, including email. Thank you. Hello, BC. Happy Friday. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Um, I wanted to give a big shout out to Mr. Basilico. Mr. Basilico put together our video for Town Hall today. Uh, so thank you for doing that for us. Today he's going to be talking about composing an email. Uh, students, composing an email is a really important skill for 21st century learners and for 21st century uh, people, honestly. Uh, the world relies on email so much now, uh, so it's really important that you know how to communicate clearly with email, and that comes down to how you compose an email, the language you use within emails, um, using the correct spaces on an email, uh, including the subject and the body. Um, Mr. Pasolico has put together a video for you. You can also check out the Blended Remote Learning Handbook online. Uh, you can find a copy of his video there and also just some basic instruction for how to compose an email. Thank you. Okay, so what we're going to do is we talked about how to write an email earlier in the year in science class, and I hope that we all saw that. I did post the recording. I don't remember the exact date, but... I do remember emphasizing the importance of writing an email, and I just want to ensure that we're able to do that effectively. What I want to do is show you how to get to an email first. So I'm going to present my screen. And my screen is being presented. So what you want to do is to get to your email, it's very important. You want to go to google.com now our emails are based off of the google platform there are other platforms where you can have emails but ours for brooklyn science are based off of google now i'm going to change accounts because i made a science account to do this and here we have our start page uh, google sometimes does like a funny little logo but this is what you should see every time you go to google.com and in the top right here, you should see these four options. Now, the first one here is your account. So you could go to your account settings. This is how you switch between accounts. So when I put the Google Meet link in our class on the stream and I say, please switch to BC emails or BC emails only, this is how you do it. So I would click on that if I wanted to switch to my BC email to join a Google Meet. Here is a section of tiles. The tiles have a bunch of attachments that we have on our Google accounts. Now they may look different on yours based on what extensions you have on Google. And when I say extensions, it's similar to like how you have apps on your phone. Here is images, we don't need that. And here is Gmail, that is your email inbox. So it's like having a mailbox, but online. So you click on Gmail. And this inbox will be empty, or maybe I have a default one from Google, but you'll be brought to this page. Now, if it's your first time, they'll walk you through a tutorial on how to do it, but this is what you'll be brought to. Some of you will have an extensive list of uh, unopened emails, which you shouldn't. It's a bad habit. I am somewhat guilty of it myself, but if you get an email and this one I have from the Google community team, you click on it and it opens it up. At the top of the email, it says who it's from. Here is the subject of the email, and we'll touch on subject in just a second. But this is just you know an introductory email, pretty basic. And you could go through and set up the account or take advantage of all the uh, services that they provide for you. But what we really wanna focus on today is composing an email. If I were to compose an email, there, First off, you want to click on this. Sorry, I didn't say that. Click on compose, this little colorful plus sign, and it says compose, and this will pop up. Now, when you have two, this is who you're sending it to. Now, I'm going to send this to my Brooklyn Science email. For us, emails will autofill. So you know how on your phones or your tablets, when you're typing, it gives you suggestions? If you begin to type out an email address that is familiar to Google, your Google account, it will autofill it. So if you started typing JPOS, the rest of my email should fill in for you. If it doesn't, you just type in the rest. Next, we have the subject. Subject is incredibly important for emails. 
I know for myself, I don't open anything without a subject just because I don't know if it's spam or not, or if someone, or if it's an email I recognize and it says no subject or uh, something along, like um, error or whatever it may be. I won't open it just because I don't know if that person's email got hacked and they sent an email to me and I don't want to risk getting a virus on my computer. So it's always important to um, use a subject. Subject of this email is how to write email. Now, I wrote it like this on purpose. You should sort of always try. Ah, you can write it like this. It's it's fine to write it this way. There are other ways to do it in terms of using capital letters, like how you would write a title of a book. It's not totally necessary, but easily switch different signatures. Cool. Okay. So the way you start off an email is, and let me just double check that I'm still recording. I am. The way you start off an email is you acknowledge whoever you're sending the email to. So I'm going to be talking in the third person, meaning talking to myself or about myself. Dear Mr. Silico. And you always put a comma after it. Then you hit enter twice so you could separate that the start of the email from the body, and then you begin to write your email. In writing emails, if I want to say thank you, I don't write TY or THNX. This isn't a text message. We wanna really focus on writing professional emails because a professional email is something that you will use no matter what career you choose. Whether you choose to go into some sort of academic setting, whether it be college or post-college or anything, or if you go straight into the workforce after high school, you will still need to write email. So it's incredibly important that you can write a proficient or you're proficient in writing um, a well-written email because it's a very good life skill to have. It helps you get jobs more efficiently um, if they could see that you're well-spoken. So dear Mr. Pasilico, I am writing um, you always want to introduce yourself. My name is John Silico. Weird. We have the same name. And I am writing to you and, uh, to show to my students how to write a proper email, period. Now, I'm sure... Mr. Campbell can correct my grammar. I think everything is good, but it's always good to double check. There are programs that you can use to double check grammar, um, or you could rely on Ms. Canis's lessons to, that are teaching you grammar. But you want to ensure that you have as proper of grammar as possible. That includes using commas, periods, exclamation points, parentheses, uh, colons, semicolons, whatever it may be. And then... I made my first line. Uh, this is an important skill that they will all need, regardless of what career they choose to pursue. Again, notice how I'm using capitals, correct punctuation. And when I separate paragraphs, I, I prefer to do it um, with a space between, you don't always have to. Uh, but I think it looks a little bit more organized. It's easier to separate out ideas. In an email, Also, um, if you're not the greatest speller, Google does have autocorrect and helps you out in that regard. Now, I'm not going to go through grammar lesson. I'm not going to go through, you know, how to spell. I'm not the greatest speller. I don't have the greatest grammar, but I do rely on certain programs and I do look up things that I am unsure of when I am writing. And when I'm finished, you always want to sign off on an email. That means writing 
thanks. Remember, not THNX or however you write it when you're texting. You can write thanks or sincerely your see how it autofills here that's google doing it because those are common ways to sign off on an email you put a comma after it and then your name once you're done you hit send if you don't hit send it goes straight to drafts like it is right now if i x out which i'll do I could go straight to drafts and it saved it as a draft. It never sent. So this email never got to my Brooklyn Science account. Now I hit send. And the way you could check if it's send, uh, you go to sent on these options over here and it's there. Sincerely yours, John Basilico. All right. Main points we need to have a subject line. We need to uh, acknowledge who we're speaking to. We need to introduce ourselves if it's our first time emailing somebody, and we always need to state why we're writing. It's important to use proper grammar, proper punctuation. Remember, this isn't a text message. This is a professional email. So I, I don't want to see in my inbox an email from any student that's like, yo, Mr. P, what's good? Like, and, and it's W-H-T-S-G-U-D. Like, I... I'm, we're not friends, and I know that sounds mean, but you need to write professionally because it's a good habit to develop now, especially at such a young age. I hope that this addresses many of your concerns or confusion with writing an email. And if you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out. All right. Thank you, Mr. Pasilico, for putting that together. If you have any questions, everyone just send Mr. Pasilico an email. Have a great weekend, everyone.